Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I test the Pillow app on the Apple Watch against this small scientific EEG device that's being used in several research projects. I wore both of these for 10 nights and I will directly compare their results. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For those of you who are not familiar with the app called Pillow, it's used in combination with the Apple Watch to track your sleep. Among other things, the app tracks the sleep stages you go through each night. Specifically, it tracks deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake. It also provides a sleep score, does a heart rate analysis and helps you take naps. In this video, I'll focus on analyzing the accuracy of the sleep stage tracking. Once I've collected many more nights of data, I might have a look at the sleep score accuracy as well. In order to do the sleep comparison, I wore the Apple Watch to bed for 10 nights. At the same time, I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device measures brain waves and muscle movements. It's called the Hypnodyne ZMAX and is used by several of my colleagues in scientific studies. If you're interested in this device for scientific studies, I will link it below. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I also manually went through the pillow app sleep stages and noted those down in an Excel table so I could actually analyze them. I had to do this because the export I got from the app did not include the details that I needed. In addition to tracking sleep stages, the app automatically detects when you fall asleep and when you wake up. So I'll also test how accurate this was. With the infrared recording, I can actually check what my movements were like and see if the Pillow app correctly predicts when I'm awake. Let's first have a look at the 10 individual nights, where I compare the sleep stages of the Pillow app to the sleep stages I went through according to the EEG device. I will go through the first few nights in detail and I will just highlight the most important parts of some of the later nights. Here we see the first night I recorded. On top, you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. On the horizontal axis, we have the time of the night. And as you can see, I went to bed quite late, a little bit after midnight. On the vertical axis, you have the different sleep stages. Deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. The sleep stages are plotted in the order that are usually displayed in research. On the bottom, you can see a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded using the Pillow app. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG device, which is marked here in purple, we do see there's a partial match between the Pillow app and the EEG device. The first deep sleep section matches pretty well. However, the Pillow app predicts much more deep sleep at later time points. Also, the last deep sleep stage is recognized as REM sleep by the Pillow app. Overall, the match between the deep sleep stages is rather poor. Next, if we look at REM sleep, we see a pretty bad match between the EEG device and the Pillow app. There's almost no overlap and REM sleep according to the Pillow app appears to have been mostly light sleep in reality. To see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep together called non-REM and always ends in REM. Again, non-REM is marked in blue and REM in red. Looking at the sleep cycles, there's quite bad overlap between the Pillow app and the EEG device. Now, this is not unexpected since we already saw problems with the detection of REM sleep, which is vital to the detection of sleep cycles. Looking just at the Pillow app data, I would not have been able to see any of my sleep cycles. Next, let's have a look at the times that I was awake, which are marked here in green. Here, the Pillow app did perform quite well. It detected correctly when I woke up during the night. When we evaluate the quality of the automatic detection of the moment I fell asleep, this was quite okay. There was a slight delay in the moment I fell asleep, but otherwise it was quite accurate. Now let's have a look at the next night. This was a night where I woke up quite a bit, as you can see here on top in the EEG plot. If we first look at deep sleep, again, we only see a partial match between the EEG device on top and the pillow app on the bottom. 
pillow shows many very short deep sleep segments which actually appear more frequent at the end of the night. Normally, to put it very generally, deep sleep should decrease at the end of the night, whereas REM sleep should increase, which is not what we see here. Again, also for REM sleep, we see very little overlap. Most REM sleep actually appears to be tracked by the pillow app as deep sleep and light sleep. This also means that the sleep cycles are not really visible in the graph produced by the pillow app. Just viewing the pillow app output, I would honestly not be able to see any of my sleep cycles. Awake detection was quite okay again. It appears to have detected the longer awake moments and the others were marked mostly as light sleep. If we look at sleep start detection, again there was a slight delay in detecting my start of sleep according to the pillow app, but no major problems. The wake up time detection was a bit worse with it not detecting the final part of my night. If we look at the next night, deep sleep again seems to only have a partial match with way too much deep sleep predicted by the pillow app. REM sleep again was mostly predicted as light sleep and deep sleep, which also means that the sleep cycles are not really visible in the pillow app. Awake detection was again okay. And we also see the same slight delay in sleep start we saw before, but overall detecting the moment I fell asleep has been of okay quality so far. I will not go through all the nights. For the final nights, I will just show the most important parts. For this night here, we again see pretty poor deep sleep detection, as is marked here in blue. However, the awake detection is okay, as you see in green. Again, there's some delay in detecting sleep onset, which we saw more often. However, in the next few nights, I actually saw the opposite, where the pillow app detected sleep when I was still awake. Let me show you what that looked like. Here we have the first example, where the pillow app detected some light sleep when I was still fully awake and not even in bed. If we look at the next night, we see that it even detected some deep sleep in a moment where I was still working on my computer. Interestingly, the next night is actually the opposite, where it had trouble detecting the moment I fell asleep and it predicted this at a much later time than I actually fell asleep. However, for the last two nights I want to show you, these fake sleep detections were even worse, as you can see here, especially for this last night here. Here you can see that the watch basically detected the equivalent of a whole night's sleep before I even went to bed. One thing I noticed while looking at these sleep stages is that the algorithm appears to have some rules hard-coded into it. Let me show you what I mean. Here you can see one of the nights tracked with the pillow app. First of all, what I noticed that if it tracks deep sleep, this is always preceded by light sleep. So there always needs to be light sleep before it will track deep sleep. Now as a second rule, if any REM sleep was tracked, before that there was always deep sleep. Finally, light sleep and wake seem to follow any sleep stage. However, having these strict rules encoded in the algorithm does have consequences. And my nights, as tracked by the pillow app, seem to be basically a combination of two patterns. The first pattern is light sleep followed by deep sleep followed by REM sleep. And the second pattern is light sleep followed by deep sleep. If we look at this night, we can see that it's basically a combination of just these two patterns and periods of awake. Here I mark the first pattern in purple, and as you can see it occurs 8 times. Now here I also mark the second pattern in green, and this occurs 6 times. It does make me wonder if the fact that these patterns seem to be hard coded in the algorithm is actually the cause of the poor performance we've seen so far. It does seem to increase the likelihood of having small fragmented sleep stages, which is one of the problems of the pillow app. Now that we visually inspected the individual nights, what does it look like in terms of statistics? Based on what we saw in the individual nights, I would expect a lot of confusion between most sleep stages. I expect especially REM sleep to be often detected as light sleep, though awake detection appears to be quite good. Let's take a look. First, let's look at the total percentage of each sleep stage that the EEG and pillow app predicted. Overall, we can see that these percentages are pretty far off. The pillow app predicts almost double the amount of deep sleep I had, about half the amount of light sleep and more than double the awake time. This is very much in line with what we saw for the individual plots before. We can actually check which sleep stages are mostly confused by the pillow app. And that's what I displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device. And on the left we have the sleep stages according to the pillow app. Now each column here sums to 100% meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the pillow app. 
First, we indeed see that what was actually deep sleep is basically tracked as an equal amount of deep sleep, but also light sleep and REM sleep by the Pillow app. This is much worse than many of the other devices and apps I've tested. The only good thing is that deep sleep is almost never confused with awake time. Next, if we look at light sleep, we indeed see that this was mostly detected as light sleep, though almost the same amount was predicted as deep sleep and REM sleep. REM sleep is even more problematic. Only 13.9% of what was actually REM sleep was predicted as REM sleep. Most of it was actually tracked as deep sleep and light sleep by the Pillow app. Finally, looking at awake time, this is the most positive thing about these results. Most awake time was indeed detected as awake and what was confused was tracked as light sleep. So far, the Pillow app does not yet look very promising for me. But before I draw my final conclusions, I want to put the Pillow app in the context of two other Apple Watch apps that I looked at in previous videos, the Sleep Cycle app and the AutoSleep app. Here I plotted the results from several apps at once. On top we have the EEG device, below that we have the Sleep Cycle app, the third app is the AutoSleep app, and on the bottom we have the Pillow app. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, we see that Sleep Cycle indeed shows some deeper sleep around these areas. Also, to some degree, AutoSleep has some deeper sleep here. However, for Pillow, it's really a mix of light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep. Most interestingly, if we look at sleep cycles, we can clearly see those depicted in the app called Sleep Cycles. We see higher values when in REM and lower values when in non-REM. If we look at auto sleep, this is not as well represented. However, we can still very roughly see the sleep cycles. And as many people commented, if I recalibrated the app, it might look even better. However, if we look at Pillow, I don't really see any of the sleep cycles. Out of these three apps, I would judge Pillow to be the least informative for me. However, I will make a dedicated, more detailed video comparing different Apple Watch sleep apps soon. So to summarize, deep sleep, light sleep and REM sleep are very often confused by the Pillow app. REM sleep is the most problematic, only 13.9% of what was actually REM sleep was also predicted as REM sleep by the Pillow app. Most of it was actually tracked as deep sleep and light sleep. Awake detection was quite okay though. Additionally, on several occasions, the Pillow app detected sleep while I was not even in bed yet. Other apps for the Apple Watch like AutoSleep, but especially Sleep Cycle, performed much better in sleep tracking, at least in my previous tests. Overall, I cannot really recommend the Pillow app for the tracking of your sleep stages. There are, in my opinion, better apps available on the Apple Watch and also many other fitness trackers have better sleep tracking capabilities. As I mentioned, I wonder if the poor performance is partially due to the hard-coded patterns that seem to be included in the algorithm. There are a few things I should mention before I finish. First of all, I entered all the information that the Pillow app asked of me, but I did not tweak my results in the morning. You can reanalyze the night by tweaking the awake time, but I decided not to do this, since this basically means that I'm adding subjective data to my tracking. I want a sleep tracking device to give me objective tracking of my sleep, since I want to find out if these patterns match my subjective feelings. Second, when I released my video on the auto sleep app, many people commented that I could improve results by tweaking the sensitivity. I really appreciated that input, so if you have any more information or thoughts on the Pillow app, please leave it in the comments below. Finally, I did not use any of the premium features of the app in my analysis. A big downside of the app is that you can only see your previous night if you do not pay the premium subscription. I should mention some of the limitations of the data that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the app on me and just for 10 nights. A better study would include multiple participants of different demographic backgrounds. Second, to do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to also test the Apple Watch apps against a full scientific polysomnography setup. I'm actually building my own polysomnography device using OpenBCI components as we speak. That way I'll not have to rely on sleep labs for my testing, which is especially difficult in these times of Corona. Finally, I'm not a professional sleep stage scorer. I think I did a decent job, but for some parts of the night, I might have been a little bit off. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. 
So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.